welcome to episode 34 of the Adorn It podcast. I'm your host, Steph, also known as Adorn It Steph on Instagram, and Nanny Samurai over on Ravelry. So this is a podcast about knitting and my projects that I'm working on, as well as uh, the stitch markers and progress keepers that I love to make. So with that said, we have a pretty full show for you today. I took notes a little bit. So uh, <laughs> there are, there is a finished object, a whip or two, a uh, prize drawing, shop talk, and then a bunch of life stuff to share with you. So you ready? Okay. I've just got to say, podcasting is one of those things that if you don't do it often enough, you get really rusty and uh, out of practice. <laughs> So this may be a bit of a rough episode and I may need to record more often if I don't want to stumble. <laughs> okay, back to the show. So first up, finished objects. I have been doing the uh, Desert Vista Dye Works knit along for, I don't know, 15, 16 months now, a long time. And when I look at my Ravelry page, I like to sort it by whips and then most recent finishes. It's like all socks because I'm not knitting that much lately and I, when I do knit I am focused on so on getting these socks done because she offers amazing prizes for participating in the knit along so I want to finish and do it every month so um, I feel like my I'm saying this because my project page makes me really look like I'm a hardcore sock knitter and I don't feel like I am, but I'm also not turning out other things. But with the um, pigskin party hosted by Jen of Down Cellar Studios, with that knit along coming up in the end of September, um, that encourages only new prizes, only new projects get entered, and it encourages lots of smaller whips. So last year I did dishcloths and gnomes and like I did three different gnomes, just different, small, interesting projects. So I say that to say, yes, I have shown you a lot of socks lately, but there will be things other than socks on the horizon. Also, the boys set the kitchen timer for how much video game time they earned, and I can hear it going off every 30 seconds, and they're clearly not getting up and turning it off. So if you hear beeping, that's what it is. So I am holding a little something here. Uh, these are the most beautiful color ever for serious this well I don't know which is of Eastwick pretty gorgeous too but I love these so the socks or the yarn is Desert Vista Dye Works the Queen's hat I believe she's been retired till next till I don't know but I'm not sure maybe not maybe you could still get it if you can go get it it's definitely worth it the pattern is um, a slip stitch pattern I'll link it across in the um on the screen right here and i'll link it down below or you can always go to my ravelry project page to see it i did get um adobe photoshop and adobe elements i splurged actually the shop splurged um and so the editing might be a bit different and i'm learning but i wanted something that was a bit smoother and i could do all the things that I used to be able to do on the old computer. The new computer, the free software that comes on an HP for editing videos, it was not great. So I got the Adobe one. So we'll see how that goes. Because editing on my phone, I can do it. If you want a podcast, you can totally edit on your phone. But um, it's very tiny and it's hard to control and it's not as exact, at least with my fingers. So anyways, okay. So there are these. I knit them on size zero. Um, every time I post a picture of them on Instagram, I get a boatload of likes and um, asked what the pattern is. This is a great mindless pattern. I did, so it's a slip stitch. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, so you're slipping every uh, fourth stitch. And I did a 64 stitch sock, which is my normal. But the slip stitches do make it a bit tighter. I intended to make a 72 stitch sock, but um, working the heel, I I decreased too much, and I I didn't plan for it going into the the beginning of the heel construction. And with this heel, which is the Tina Ku heel that I like right now, um, with this heel, I 
yeah, you have to plan it at the beginning or it's not gonna make sense further up. I guess it, it could, you could pick up more when you do the flap. But anyways, um, I also decided to, I was sitting by the pool working on these, the pool, and um, I mean, it is a pool, but it's a kiddie pool. I was working on these and I decided, you know what? I'm not gonna do color management. I do color management almost every single month. And so I didn't, so you can see, I mean, I did it to the point of matching up the color stripes so at the front they looked this color sequence remained the same I did do that but I um, didn't match up the size of the stripes so you could see that that purplish magenta stripe the light purple stripe and the dark purple stripe maybe you can see it are smaller than the other stripes of, of that color but whatever it's fine I don't like the way this real thin line of pink looks I know so I'm nitpicking but uh, other than that they came out gorgeous they fit perfectly I'm gonna show you the back of the heel because I just can't love this heel enough for the way it looks I'm not sure how these are gonna wear that's my big concern so normally I would do a um, I don't know what it's called slip where you slip every other is that a, a bird's eye I don't know but I would do a uh, knit a row and then purl back but slip every other on the purl back row because I purl slower and so if you do on your heel flap if you do the uh, slip stitches on the purl row it means your knit row can be as fast as it normally is so there's the back of it so this has no reinforcement right a normal heel flap gets you two layers of fabric essentially um, as you're slipping the stitches and the yarns behind, but this doesn't have that. So we'll see if I go through these faster. The bottom is the same as it, as my normal Wendy Johnson heel would be. So, and I don't normally wear through. Yes, I do. The bottom is where I wear through. Mom and dad, oh, I gotta remember. He has a pair of socks with a hole and then she does too. I did an afterthought heel a couple months back on the Easter egg looking ones. Um, I did an afterthought heel and no, it wasn't an afterthought heel. I think it was the fork in the road pattern. And at the end you, it's like the top of a hat and you just kind of pull the stitches, you know, knit through the last six stitches, pull it and make a knot on the inside and then weave in your ends. Well, apparently I did not do that very well because the heel let go at that point. So I've got to get some yarn to her because she wants to fix it. And then my dad wore through some on the top of the foot, which I'm like, how did that happen? Maybe the yarn had a weak spot, but that was an opal yarn or a regia. Not sure. It's an older one that I knit a while ago. <laughs> and this is how much I have left. So the slip stitch pattern does eat up a bit more yarn. So I used uh, I typically, when I knit socks, it's around 55 grams. I've learned from for Desert Vista. This took 70. So usually I have enough of a, a leftover that I could um, do heels and toes and cuffs and use that self-striping yarn again. Um, but 30 grams is not enough for me to be able to do that for my big, massive size 11 feet. And you know how last time I showed you all of those my bowl of yarn. So I've been cranking and uh, I take a picture, I crank the yarn, I take another picture, and then at some point I'll sit down and I load them into Ravelry, that's my process. And I don't put them away until they've had their pictures taken and they've been loaded, right? So I bought the same color twice. It was inevitable it was going to happen. When you have like 40, I don't know if I have 40, well, yeah, partial skeins too of um, 40 skeins. Like, yeah, you're gonna love the same colors. So it was a lesson to me. Next time I fall in love with something from Desert Vista, I'm going to have to go check my shopping cart <laughs> against what I already own before I pull the trigger. All right, this is a messy mess, but this is my September colorway. So totally not my color. Um, it is Wisteria Tunnel. And the, I think the light purple, so it's a, a dark purple, light purple cream 
citron, and then a dark green. Um, so two greens, two purples, and a cream. I think that the purple may, might be variegated. I've only done <laughs> the tip, but uh, it, it seems to have like some speckling in it, or maybe that one stripes off. I, I'm not sure. I haven't seen this knit up. I don't need to see it knit up. It's a fun surprise, right? I'll get to see it as it goes. So I don't know where I was showing you my most recent socks, but here they are. These are gonna be for September, and I'm not totally in love with them. But I am gonna knit a couple pairs for some friends of ours, or yeah, I guess they're friends of ours. Um, when I was in high school, uh, one of the boy I babysat for, his mom was a knitter, and this was before I was anything more than a garter stitch, back and forth, back and forth. And um, at an auction, I believe, for the Waldorf school, we, my parents got me a sweater. Um, or it was a gift certificate for a sweater. So I picked out, we paid for the yarn, I think, and she donated her time to it. So I wanted something with a big cable and a, it's black, it's brown, so it's hard to see, but yeah. So she knit this for me and this is probably 1998, 97, somewhere in there when it was knit and I still have it and it still smells lanily and it's super scratchy and it was exactly what I wanted at the time. So um, this was not my first sweater, but it was my first hand knit sweater that I appreciated. <laughs> and I'm seeing she put a tag on the inside. It just says made especially for you. Nice. So there it is. I ran up and got it. So anyways, I think she contacted me the other day on Instagram, uh, which is fun for her to be sort of involved in my life still, even though they're very far away, or they're pretty far away. Um, and so she wanted to know the pattern I was using for the slip stitch heel, a uh, no slip stitch sock, which I'm gonna do again, by the way. I really like that pattern, I'm on a jag. And uh, she wanted to know the name of the pattern, so I told her, and I'm thinking I might knit her and her end, um, knit both of them a pair of socks just I love them and I have more I whip out more socks than I know what to do with and yeah you know they're totally knit worthy people so uh that's where my head is right now <laughs> I don't know if these will be for her or if I'll go because I have a bin a one of those size bins of um finished goods you know the gift box so I might go look in there for some socks that would fit them because they're definitely more uh crunchy granola types I don't know what you would call them now crunchy granola is what we would have called them when I was in high school but anyway so there's that that's what I'm thinking for a future project also I think I showed you these last time and I'm not sure they got much work right yeah because my stitch marker is pointlessly hanging on the toe unless that's where I was which it could be so this is uh lion brands mani petty and I know the name of it no I don't but here it is in the skein and yeah I'm doing the same pattern again Let's see self-striping. This would be perfect for Bridget. Maybe I'll make this for her. Ooh, I like that idea. Mm. Okay, so change plans. Uh, Bridget is taller than I am, so I'm pretty sure that my size 11 is going to work for her. So that's what I'm thinking. Okay, and then the last whip I have to show you is the Simple Hug Cardi. This is by the uh, Cozy Cozy Up Knits Girls and it's knit on size nine needles. So it's going pretty darn fast, right? So I calculated my gauge and, right, because the pattern calls for size tens and I'm using size nines because that's what worked with the yarn, which is Lion Brand Ombre, I think. It's a big box yarn, yarn, 
anyways so um i like the way these colors looked in the cake so i wanted to knit a sweater with it and i liked the striping sequence of this pattern um and i wanted their striping sequence <laughs> so i bought it uh <laughs> When I did my calculations, I needed to add eight extra rows under the, in the body of it to make it long enough for me. And it's still, maybe I should have done a little, a few more rows to make it the right length. It's also supposed to be a big boxy sweater and it'll have um, a button band here in front, but I did knit it uh, closer to my own size because I don't like big boxy things. So when I got to here and I split off for the front and the back, I completely forgot that my row gauge was different than that of the pattern. So I just followed the pattern instructions for what to do from the armhole split up to here. Yeah, you see where this is going, right? It's super, super, super tight like uncomfortably tight and I feel like this sweater like you can maybe you can see I don't know is um well it definitely is shorter than I would like so if I had a little bit more length in the upper torso whatever in the chest area then it should lower the whole thing so I did my three needle bind off on the shoulders it has a nice seam look how pretty I haven't done a three needle bind off in a while. So um, yeah, I was really pleased with how much I had gotten done and how well it was going. Look, there's the polar bear. That's where I was last time. But I need to rip back and add in some more. I'm not sure what I'm gonna, I'm not gonna rip back. No, I just need to take out the bind off and then add more above that. That'll work. So that's what's going on here. So next up, I have a shop update. So let's do that. Or maybe it was prize drawing. Prize drawing, prize drawing. So there were, so each month, uh, the Adorn It Etsy shop that I run with my husband and sort of my mom, <laughs> um, we do a $10 gift certificate to the shop prize drawing uh, to enter. You need to post your pictures on Instagram of your works in progress with our markers or progress keepers, progress markers on them. Just sharing what you're working on because we love to see it and use the hashtag, hashtag adorn it. And that gets you an entry. Enter as many times as you'd like. It's it, easy peasy, right? You're already posting. So there were 37 entries this month and the winner was number 10. And that was Laura, Laura Knits and Whips 03. So send me a PM any way you'd like, Instagram, Ravelry, through the shop, whatever. Reach out and I will get you your code. So yeah, there's a lot going on in the shop right now and it's so exciting and so Fun. And to see my dream of a stitch marker shop growing and growing and growing the way it has, is just a beautiful thing. It's like, I, I never thought I would be an entrepreneur, but I, I feel like I'm one and it's so exciting. So anyways, that said, here's what's new for the month of August or September. No, August. <laughs> Hello. So what's new in the shop for the end of August, early September? First up, you can see some new Witcher. We have an entire collection devoted to that um, television show slash book. The first one is inspired by Siri, Yennefer, and Geralt. Uh, that is the famous white wolf symbol that Geralt wears as a Witcher. Um, this one is, we're calling it, come on, Roach, because he says that to his horse all the time. Uh, <laughs> this is Siri, the lion, uh, lion cub of Sentra. So that blue, azure blue. Uh, Yennefer, this one is inspired by Eratusa, where she went to school and uh, some of the clothing that she wears, those are the colors. And then Jasker or dandelion as he's called in the books he's so cute with his toss a coin to your witcher songs so that one makes me smile a little bit more 
Next up, we're gonna move into our project bags and notions pouches. So the first one is heart knitting, and those little pink hearts are embroidered on top. This is a holiday puppy bag, Notions pouch. And we also have a Happy Holidays Notions pouch. This one we are calling Nomi Forest Christmas. So again, with the embroidery, you can see it along the outsides of the trees. There's the matching Notions pouch with all the little woodland creatures. And the zipper pull is a big fat tree. These are, we're calling our autumnal neighborhood bags. So these flew out of the shop. We have restocked the smaller sizes. So you can get them in day-to-day, -day, equator, or our new very large bags, which are called Everest bags. And there are matching notions pouches, two choices to choose from for those. Uh, we're transitioning into Halloween, hocus pocus. Here you have the set inspired by the famous Sanderson sisters. A little ghoul and um, <laughs> the haunted house. And here is Woodstock's set dressed up as a witch. And if you're looking for a sincere pumpkin, you could stop by and get a Lucy or a Linus wizard set. Uh, we also have some Mario and Luigi sets in the shop. These make me smile and think of leveling up while I played Super Mario Brothers 3. That was my version. Um, and we also have a Yoshi with your choice of mushroom color. So those are the reds or you can go with the green. And lastly, the more you spend, the more you save in the shop right now. 20% off orders over 30. And that's it. So thanks so much for sticking with me. Okay, and then welcome back. Lastly, here is the time. Let me just get myself sorted. Okay, now let's talk about life. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of a life update. So I said I had been cranking yarn and it's slow. Like, I'm just not into cranking. <laughs> But uh, I did one day while I was cranking teach the boys the difference between a cake and a skein. So that was kind of funny. Um, rolling up braces just on the top. And they said it would take a month for his front teeth to go in front of his bottom teeth. Because that's the reason we're getting it. It's called crossbite. And uh, two weeks in, it was done. It's, he's they've gone where they need to go. So I'm not sure what the, we're going to do with the next six months, if it's just about maintaining that spot or if they're going to try and put his front teeth together. I would love it if they do that, but this is the pre-braces before the real finished product braces when all of his adult teeth are in. So, and he's been a real trooper about it. And we got a water pick instead of, because flossing with braces, that is crazy. I am not helping him do that. So we got a water pick instead, and wow, that's super messy. But I th think it's a better option. So I tried it, and man, my teeth felt very clean afterwards. So I, I think it's a good, good investment for that. Um, let's see, what else? We my Roland and I started a couch to 5k so that's um you go from no running up to running a 5k and uh we're doing great we are on week five day two or day one day one I think uh we ran this morning and yeah it's good he uh I've been in front of him whenever we're running almost the entire time. And today I said, okay, you, I bribed him. You can have um, 30 minutes of video game time if you run in front of me the whole way. He did. I know he has, he's been like sandbagging me on his running ability because there's no, he should definitely be able to outrun me. And he did this morning. So that was great. That was fun to see. And what else? What have I been watching, reading, listening to? Um, I've been listening to a couple new podcasts. So the, um, I love My Favorite Murder. I don't love it. 
I like it and I listen to it on, I'll binge like five or six episodes and then I won't listen to it again for a month. So it's good company when my head is in that space. So I was doing that and I decided to give the Murder Squad a try. It's kind of a spinoff. It's similar. Um, I like it. It's, I, I mean, I think I've listened to 20 episodes, but uh, yeah, one of the guys on it is a detective. So it's, it's interesting to hear uh, his thoughts on how he would handle some murders and stuff. And they have actually solved a couple cases from that podcast and the results that they've uh, been able to get from crowdsourcing. So it's pretty cool. Um, I'm also watching, I've been watching a lot of Sweet Tea No Shade, which is a knitting video podcast. The other one was audio. Um, yeah, so that's Scott and John and they are hilarious. I love them. I never know though if they're joking about Betty Ann, his mom, or if they're serious. Like they, they are so deadpan when they say these things and they're so outrageous, but then they're so serious. So I don't know. Do you know? Check them out if you haven't. Um, Steve and I have been watching Critical Role. I don't know if I mentioned that here before. Uh, it's a Dungeons and Dragons video podcast and um, it's like a hundred episodes of a story arc. So we're on episode, I think, 62 of the second campaign. So uh, I, I came in late. He was watching it without me for the, like the first 50, I want to say. So it's been fun to do that. Their episodes are three, four hours long. So it's a commitment, but it's very fun. And um, actually during quarantine, watching a podcast with eight people, all interacting and laughing and the jokes I mean they're all they're our age so the jokes are uh, pop culture references that suit us and we're nerdy like them so it, it's been a good source of company if that's yeah just having some other humans on the other side of the screen because that's what everything is these days so um what else I uh, together as a family we finished Wok Fu, which is on Netflix. It's a little out there, but I enjoyed it. And I am always stuck with the theme song in my head whenever I hear it. Um, and we finished the Avatar, the first cartoon one. We'd already watched Legend of Korra on Prime, uh, but Netflix got it and it doesn't pick up. It picks up like 50 years after uh, the Avatar, so we're rewatching it because things mean a lot more now that we know the pre-story. So, um, that's been fun as our, like, family, oh, okay, let's sit down and watch an episode together. Uh, what else is going on? By myself, I watched all of Cursed, so that's also on Netflix. These are all on Netflix, and, um, that's a great retelling of the Arthur Merlin Camelot story, but uh, before that, prior to Arthur doing all his knightly deeds or whatever, honorable things. Um, yeah, so I, I like that. I It was a good watch. It wasn't great, but it was definitely entertaining. And I always love anything. Well, not any, always, but I tend to like medieval knights, that type of stuff. So I have been saving The Last Kingdom. Um, I watched the first three seasons, I think. I think there are four. I watched the first three, and then I had to wait for the fourth season. That is my heart show. I love it so much. I love Uhtred. It's just, I don't know. I really enjoy that show. It's a different now. Uh, the king has changed, so that dynamic that I really loved watching isn't there as much as it was but it's still a really good show <laughs> so um yeah and that is about vikings uh i don't know when 1100 13th century not sure 14th century i'm not alfred is the king <laughs> whatever alfred ruled so, um, and he's trying to unite all of England into the United Kingdom. So, there's that. Um, yeah, 
I think that's all I have for notes. That's all I've been watching. <laughs> and the boys are going back to school September 10th. We got their teachers. Tristan's in the same class as his best friend, which is awesome. Um, what else? I know I'm sure he'll make some new friends. There's a set of twins in his class. So there's all kinds of Facebook groups and like different chat threads. And I know that if I needed support to feel comfortable with the situation of online schooling, it would be a great resource, but I don't need support for that. And so I'm just feeling kind of like I'm falling behind, if that makes sense, in not keeping up with everything that's being said and all the posts and all the chat threads. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not, I don't need that. So I'm in the groups and I look around occasionally, like every other day, but yeah, it's a lot to keep track of. It's like ooh, thread bankruptcy over and over and over, which can be kind of stressful for me anyways. I don't like to not do things I'm expected to do. So, um, and for Ro, we don't know yet. I left it for him to contact his friends and find out who they got. So I know some of them, I talked to their moms, but his best friends, I'm letting him find out. So we'll see what's up with that. I'm sure it will be a different and a good school year. I have faith in it. So yeah, we're gonna set up one boy in here and one boy in the playroom and I'm gonna have my headset if I need to. And this way I'm with Tristan so I can kind of keep him like pay attention on track. Cause this time the school day is online programming from eight to two thirty, I think every day. So that's a lot of screen time for him. And I know there'll be breaks, but yeah, I might need to help a little bit. So that's our plan. That's what our future holds. And oh, there's one more big thing. I totally forgot to tell you this. <laughs> We've been on a, a search for another Devon Rex. So we, I'm allergic to cats. Devon Rex are, they don't have guard hairs and they really don't shed. And, um, I'm not allergic to Devon Rex, right? They're sometimes called the hypoallergenic cat, Devon's and Cornish Rex's. Um, I wouldn't say that. I would never market them that way, but they work for me. I can be around them and not be a sneezing mess. Dogs, cats, I'm a mess normally. So we've been searching for another one because Aphrodite is all on her own since Mac passed away in October. So it's a long time. And Steve's really been missing Mac. You know, we each in the evenings would have a cat on our lap. And Aphrodite, as much as I try to push her over to him, and she sits next to him during the day at his desk, but she's still not his cat. She doesn't, I'm the one she wants to be with. So we're getting a kitten. I know, I know, I know. It's so exciting. It's also a little nerve wracking that the current, uh, that it's lining up the way it is. But rather than waiting longer to get a kitten or a retired older cat, that would be fine. We got Aphrodite as a retiree. Um, yeah, we're gonna go. Steve's gonna fly and we're gonna risk it. And I've gotten him lots of masks and gloves to wear. And um, he's gonna go pick up the kitten in 12 days. So it's exciting. He's a little boy and his name so far has been boy. <laughs> That's the, what his, um, his current mom calls him. And so we are trying to come up with a name. And since Aphrodite is a goddess name, it's like, we want to match that. But then all the names we like from Avatar and Dragon Prince, and they're all kind of, um, Asian themed, you know? So like, we'd like, Appa and Momo and like those are really cute names right and Callum from Dragon Prince those would all be good but um it seems silly to have one cat named Aphrodite like this big professional name and the other one named Momo that's just it's not fair so my current favorite name is Archimedes because are you thinking of Sword in the Stone? Mm. 
yeah. I can just see my little guys running around screaming Archimedes. So we'll see if that's what we call him or not. He is gray. He's a silver tabby. So um, he matches Aphrodite pretty well. So, so excited. So that's it. Next time I record, you'll see him. He'll be here. Okay. That's all for now. I will talk to you again when I have something to share. <laughs> no, I'll try for in a month from now. So take care until then. Enjoy your knitting. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.